Paul, thanks for joining us. Uh, why thanks, don't you Mark. just uh, tell us a little bit about Spartan Bioscience? Uh, Spartan, we're the leader in rapid DNA testing. So the metaphor I like using is the same way mainframe computers went to personal computers, went to iPhones. So right now, DNA testing is all done in the lab on these mainframe DNA analyzers. And Spartan is the company that's bringing it out of the lab and closer and closer to the patient. So our ultimate vision is to get into every hospital, every doctor's office, every pharmacy, and then home use. So you started the company, you were the founder of it, yeah. and then you had brought in someone with a bit more experience at one point to be the CEO. Right. More recently, you've taken back that, that position, now you're the CEO. Mm -hmm. How has that transition been from kind of founder to, to, to CEO of the company? What I found really good was those two years having someone older was able to coach me in the things that I was lacking. And I would say the number one thing I lacked was call it the interpersonal awareness to interact well with people. Because, <laughs> thanks, sorry, my background, so I'm a medical doctor by trading, and I can tell you the way it works in the medical system, there's a hierarchy. And so the doctor is at the top, the doctor says something, the nurse does it, everyone does it. And so that was the culture I was used to. And I can tell you running a biotech startup, it's not like that. It's much more egalitarian. It took me a few years to learn that skill set, and that's what I was able to do with this other CEO who was able to coach you through that transition. So where are you at in the process and where do you want to be over the course of the next 12 months? Uh, so in the medical device space, the key milestones are first you have to commercialize your product, second you have to get FDA regulatory approval, third you have to get the landmark clinical study that provides the evidence for all doctors to switch over. So we've achieved the first two milestones. The thing we're working on now is that landmark trial, and we're doing it with Mayo Clinic. It's the largest trial of personalized medicine that's ever been done. It's over 5,000 patients, almost 30 sites around the world. So we are probably a year to two years away from finishing that trial. So that's what we need. So you're one of the most connected, or one of the connectors in the auto entrepreneurial scene. You've been that, you've played that role since I moved here uh, many years ago. How has it changed for you? How, what have you seen different over the past couple of years in Ottawa uh, for businesses, startups, entrepreneurs? I think the great thing is we now have this nucleus of entrepreneurs who have been working at it for, call it, 10 years. So we've been honing our craft, kind of in the background, not many people have been hearing about us, and then in the last, call it, year or two, everyone's like, wow, it's an overnight success. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on in Ottawa? And it's taken 10 years to get to this point. Interesting, that's awesome. So what does Ottawa have to do next? I think what Ottawa is going to do is the same thing you've seen in other successful hubs. So people, as they exit, like Shopify did their IPO, you've seen Adam Rizali sell out to uh, SurveyMonkey. So that money and that entrepreneur expertise is going to get recycled into the community. And we're going to see more and more startups, more and more entrepreneurs, more and more mentors, more and more capital. And it's going to build on itself. That's awesome. Well, we're glad to have you in this town and congratulations on all your success and we hope you the best of luck. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot.